today we're going to show you how to put on heads, cam, lower pulley, um, ported snout, uh, full long doom headers uh, on an 09 CTSV, and the full cold air kit from Weight Premier Performance. Now as you see, we've taken out the main crossbar, and now we're going to take out the 10 bolts holding in the top inner cooler, or the inner cooler cover, so we can get to the intake to pull it off, so we can get to the bolts to pull off the heads. Um, you'll see we pulled out the air box itself. We're getting ready to pull out the radiator and the fan assembly. The fan assembly just has some 10 millimeter bolts holding it in, and then a couple holding on the tubes. Then we'll pull off the cover after we get those off and then we'll get to the ones on the inside and then have the whole intake off then we'll start pulling off the heads all right now we've got the intake off we pulled it off there's um this one already has a solid isolator and you can hear that there's no clicking when you're turning it it feels a lot more stable there's a little bit of oil just from regular normal everyday driving um, so all right, now we have the intake pulled off. Um, let's see inside. Here's inside the rotors. And then so now we're to this point, we have the harness in the way, we're going to pull it out of the way and then we'll start pulling off the valve covers and then start disassembling the rest of the stuff. Alright, now we've pulled off the bottom cover so we can get into the bottom bolts into the fans. You'll see there's a couple bolts right up in there that you can't get to real easy and then there's a couple holding on all of these. And then right here is where our if we we're normally doing the intercooler install, we would normally pull off that bottom cover like we did, and then the new one just slides right up into place and holds itself in. All right, now we've pulled out the bolt for the Harmont balancer. Now we're going to pull that out, and we've also pulled off the exhaust. To get out the exhaust, we just pull off this cross brace, and then in the back, there's three rubber holding clamps for the mufflers and then you get to the headers you have to pull off the two bolts or to get to the stop manifolds off you just pull off those bolts and then the assembly comes right out the main exhaust you can see why we would want to get rid of it it crimps it down to about an inch all the way in that and then in the back half section so it's good to get an aftermarket on that inch. Now you see we've pulled off the valve covers and we're getting ready to pull all the rockers out and get the um, all the accessories off of the front of the motor. We've just pulled off the water pump also. Now we're getting ready to press off of this and I'll show you how easy it is to get this AC belt off and then also when we put it back on how to get it back on real easy. Um, you basically just do it like a bicycle bump but we'll show you in a second. All right, here we have it jacked up. We're going to show you. This is how you would um, undo the harmonic balancer. You stick in the three pulley balancer puller. Normally I have a junk bolt with the edges cut off of it to make it so it will pull straight through the hole. And um, that's where you would um, put the bolt in it and then you pry with the bolt. And it should only take a couple minutes. All right, so now we're pulling off the harmonic balancer. You can see just holding the tension from the, making, holding the AC belt to make it not want to spin. And then once we get to where the belt gets even with this part of the bracket right here, you can see how it's starting to move. Then we'll turn the motor over by hand and we'll take that belt off like a bicycle chain, which will um, pretty much make it real easy to get it on and off. There is no bracket to hold or a tensioner. It's just a, a stretch. So, all right, now we're going to start turning the um, turning the motor over by hand, and you'll see he's applying a little bit of pressure. See how he's pulling it over.
you know, just slowly off with a thing and and that's it. That was the hard part. And then to put it on, you'll just do exactly the same and you're good. All right, here now we've we're getting ready to remove the actual heads themselves. First, you pull out all of the small bolts and then you go through and then there's the bolts on the inside. Just pull them out. Then uh, make sure you get the grounds that were in the back on both sides. <clears throat> and then you're done with that. Then to do the camshaft, you just pull off the 10 bolts and then the cover comes off and you'll see there's a cam sensor on the cover itself on the newer style. And then newer for the LSA, there's a single bolt cam instead of the older style three. And there's the oil pump and then you'll see these, it's a cam uh, tensioner that makes it so it's a lot quieter and smooth operation. So to get to the camshaft, we do not have to remove the oil pump. What we'll do is, is we'll turn the motor over to where we see the little dot for the cam to line up. Then we'll remove this with an impact, <clears throat> pull this off, and then take off the cover, then the cam should come out. All right, now we've gotten the bolt out for the camshaft. You can see I lined up the dot, and then there's a groove, and you just lined up with that circle is the easiest way. Then once you go and you pull off the belt, or the chain, you'll take a metal dowel, or a pla well, metal or I use wooden dowel rods and you'll put it in, there's two holes that you'll put all the way in um, to keep the lifters in place. Um, if you don't do that, well we don't have to do that on this build because we're going to pull the heads and we can easily just keep the lifters up that way. But for the people not pulling heads and just doing a camshaft swap, then you would just use these dowels. All right, now we've gotten the four torque bolts off and then now the camshaft should be able to turn free. Here and there is where you're gonna put the dowel, pin, the dowel rods. Normally what you do is you would turn the camshaft a few times over and by doing that, you're pushing the lifters up into the carriers, which you normally wouldn't be able to see this, but you can see here since we have this head removed, those retainers are what hold the camshaft in place. So you'll be able to, um, normally by putting the dowel rods in, you're just making it so those lifters can't fall back down. But normally they won't anyways, but you never know. It's always better just to do the dowel rod. So I'm gonna take one of the sticks. I had it. Sorry, stick got stuck. See how you just slide it into place? And that's it. And then you do the next one, then you're done. All right, now you see we put in the stock a new camshaft sprocket back on. We put it in the bolts, use red Loctite. Normally torque them down to 22 foot-pounds of torque if it's a three. If it's a single, you do 55 foot-pounds of torque on the single bolt and then 50 plus degrees added to that but it's only 22 on the ones with three bolts then when you go and you clean off the block you can take these uh, the spacers in or that one that lines everything up you can pull those out of the block then you just go through with either a razor blade or a soft knife putty knife and scrape all of the factory silicone off on both sides then usually use a vacuum to make sure there's nothing sitting anywhere that shouldn't be. Make sure the cylinders are all nice and clean. Um, and then you're ready for reassembly.